The panels for the boot cowl have been pretty much done. I've got them all uh, primered. Uh, the doublers put on them, all of that kind of stuff is all done. And I could have put a coat of primer on both sides, inside and outside. And so that's pretty good. So I decided I'd go ahead and uh, paint these other panels, these uh, rear panels that I made, I might as well go ahead and primer and paint them at the same time. Well, I got to thinking about doing that, I realized that I'd kind of forgotten something when I put these together. This is a tube for the water rudder retract cables. Uh, this just goes in down through the floor and then out the bottom panel and back, and this is real long piece of stainless steel and it's uh, relatively long here to direct the water rudder retract cable keep it away from the fuel tank the belly tank uh, external fuel tank on there so anyway I've got to mount that in there someplace so I'm gonna have to I want to drill a hole in the floor and uh, mount this in here and I have to drill a corresponding hole in this one panel to mount this in. Well, anyway, this is that rear panel, um, the left hand side, and you can kind of see it's got a couple of penetrations in it here, and those are always sore spots with uh, corrosion. You can get uh, penetration water coming through, salt water buildup, and of course uh, engine grease and oil and stuff like that coming through there. And, uh, this one right through here where it's doubled over the other piece you can see it's got some corrosion there maybe maybe you can't see it I don't know um, that's uh, just grease right there but there's some corrosion underneath it it's actually not in too bad a shape considering uh, mainly along this edge here where it was lapped over this edge here it had some uh, kind of a plastic on there UHMW or something like that some real thin plastic in there here on this side, like I said it actually is not too bad. But, uh, this is a transponder antenna. Now, this is the right hand panel, and I'd had it off before and painted it on the inside, cleaned it up and painted it on the inside so there's no corrosion on it. It did have a little bit of corrosion on it. I, I cleaned the panel all up, cleaned the corrosion out and stuff, and, and, uh, and repainted it. There's a little bit of corrosion right there around that one screw hole. You can see the, the blistering maybe. A little bit around that one. Actually, surprisingly enough, there isn't any on here on the bottom. I'll go ahead and measure the hole. Uh, this is an oversized hole in here because this just it's kind of a probe it has to go it has to go down and through and kind of go around so we'll try to get some that set up to mount in there and then uh, clean those two panels up and put some primer on them I figured out a location in the floorboard here for that water rudder retract cable I looked at it and determined that I wanted it far enough forward from the flap that it wouldn't be interfered with the flap handle and the flap and this rudder cable where it goes back there's a fair lead for it right here which holds that rudder cable as close to this sidewall there as any place so uh, I just kind of looked at that and where it'd be an easy reach to grab it from the the seat front seat to retract the water rudder cable and then I marked it I took a piece of wood and clamped onto the inside of the floorboard here, the working surface of the floorboard, and then I uh, drilled a hole through the floorboard with a unibit into a half inch hole. Uh, I took this side panel and stuck it on here temporarily, and uh, then I stuck a grease pencil through the hole for the floorboard onto this and made a mark there where I wanted the hole. I'll go ahead and pull this side panel off there now and just drill that hole out with one of the rotor brooches and get a nice clean hole. That's a pretty good sized mark on there that I made with a grease pencil where that hole goes. It doesn't really make any difference. That hole's going to be plenty big enough for that guide to pass through there and then we'll put a grommet on there or something to fill that, that in. I guess I could go to a smaller bit than that problem with this rotor brooch now is a shank on it is pretty good size so you got to run with a half inch drill 
to use it. And you gotta have some kind of pliers to get this off there. It gets on there pretty tight, even if you don't put it on uh, tight, it tightens up when you use it. So we got a center pin here that uh, guides that, and if you don't put a center pin hole or punch hole in the sheet metal, this thing will just walk all over the place with these cutter teeth around there. Once they start, they work pretty good, but you've got to have a guide pin in there to get it started. And that makes a nice clean hole. Okay, one hole. Well, here's my panels. Uh, this is the two side panels here, and then the lower left and right boot cowl panels. And I got those all done, and I painted those up with primer, with PPG uh, DP48, whatever the new primer stuff is. I can't remember all the numbers on it. And I was just going to leave the inside white and paint the outside the finish color the yellow and but this primer the dp48 and all the dp primers are corrosion resistant primer oh i put them over the bare aluminum after i'd etched it and stuff and supposed to uh, protect it but these primers are not seal primer sealers and so they allow moisture to get through them and stuff like that if I'd used a primer sealer on it, it, it would have sealed these inside surfaces up and uh, protected them from the moisture and stuff. Or if I'd used the uh, polyfiber primer that I used on the doors, the baggage compartment doors, and on the elevators and horizontal stabilizers and stuff, that is a pretty hard uh, primer sealer. But I didn't have enough of that to use on everything. That's kind of what I got this uh, DP48 for anyway. So. Anyway, all of that had been painted with that and the top of the boot cowl. Yeah, so I got to worrying about that. Um, the whole purpose of painting the inside of these is to protect them from any corrosion down the road. Uh, stuff gets in there on top of that and lays in there, grease and grit, things like that, and doesn't get cleaned up very well. And then there's some abrasion and fretting and stuff in all of these uh, places where they meet and uh, where they get screwed on. Well, I wanted to coat them with something to keep them uh, from bare aluminum and just from getting paint, uh, corroded. So I decided to go ahead and, and paint them with a finish coat and I have had some Delstar down there. I think it's 8,000. I had it in the shop and the stuff I've had for almost 30 years. I had bought it uh, for patch panels, spot panels, and repairs and stuff on my 170. And uh, I'd used up most of it. I had about a third of a gallon left. I got it out, shook it up, and uh, mixed it up and, and painted these with that. And that will, gives a nice glossy finish, which really doesn't matter. Um, I don't know if you can see how glossy that is or not. It's a lot shinier. There's the primer side here. The primer's kind of dull. Um, and this is pretty thin on this one, but uh, anyway, that gives a nice glossy finish to it. So I took those down and painted them with a finish uh, coat, and that'll really protect them. Uh, that'll that'll keep them nice. Uh, should keep the corrosion from getting in there. So I've still got to paint the finish coat on the outside, but I've got these all painted. I got the two side panels done and the two bottom boot cowl halves done. I got part of one coat of paint on the upper boot cowl half and I ran out of paint in daylight about the same time. So I've just mixed up uh, a little bit more of it to finish the upper boot cowl. And as long as I'm painting here, I think I'll go ahead and dig down my uh, yellow finish coat paint and put it on the paint mixer. And I'm going to go ahead and put the finish coat on the outsides of these. Well here's my paint mixing station. A dedicated paint mixing station. It's the same station that's dedicated to rebuilding carburetors or overhauling chainsaw engines or whatever else needs to be done. 
This is a Dell Star acrylic enamel and it's DAR 8000 which is white. Now this is uh, stuff you can't get it anymore. I don't know what the equivalent is in the in the PPG product now but this was Dell Star and I, I liked using it because it's not quite as strong as the polyurethane, the durethane paint but it's pretty tough and it was easier to apply. You didn't need to have um, a, a fresh air respirator for it, a mask would work because it didn't have the long chain um, isocyanurates or whatever that stuff is called in it. This is the reducer that I've used in all of my Dell Star stuff, it's DTR601 and it's for lower temperatures because I very seldom if ever painted in anything above 65 degrees or so. Well, um, the last couple of days it's been in the 60s, today it cooled off I've got a fire going in the stove to warm everything up in here, but uh, this is a reducer. And this is the urethane hardener that I put in it. Now that actually is a um, isocyanurate or a polyurethane. That hardens it up and makes the surface of the paint harder once it's cured. Uh, makes it closer to a durethane and you don't take very much of this. You use four parts of the uh, Dell Star, three parts of the reducer, and a half a part of this. I've had this stuff for almost 30 years, if not over 30 years, and it's still usable. And this was only a third full. What I do with these cans is all my paint is when I get done using it, put it away, I open it up and I use my uh, CO2 tank for my uh, welder, for my wire feed welder and I'll purge these cans with CO2 and when I go to open them they're they're good they don't dry out or anything um, they stay pretty good this is the real tell on this because this that stuff is moisture activated and our humidity here is 80 percent plus or minus mostly plus and almost immediately when you open this can it starts activating so they don't last very long the shelf life is not very long and I've had this can 25 years or so um, I think I just opened it oh two or three years ago but the other can that I had prior to this I used it for for many many years and I do the same thing with it when I get done using it I open it up and I purge it with CO2 and then close it back up again and that's worked really well for keeping this stuff And this uh, DAR 9000, this is what I'm going to use for the top of the cowling, uh, both the engine cowling and the boot cowling, and around the windshield uh, brackets, the retainers, the lower retainers for the windshield. Well, I'm going to put some flattener in it. I've got, got some flattener for it, so I'll put that in there. Now this is the same stuff as the white. It's uh, just black. And again, I've had this stuff for, I don't know, almost 30 years. This can... Um, I did use it down about halfway and before I started putting the CO2 in it, it, it skinned over and I broke the skin off and I dumped as much of this in a, as I could in, in a quart container, filled up a quart container here with it and, uh, and then I purged this with um, CO2 and it still has about this much in it. I just got it out the other day and put it on the paint shaker and shook it up, got the solids mixed up on it, and, and it's still fine inside even though it's only got about this much paint in it. Now I do do have this uh, high solids polyurethane DUHS Delta and that's uh, uh, 8,000 or 80,502 uh, that's the yellow and this was the real expensive stuff here. I don't know what it is. It's uh, several hundred dollars a gallon in the yellow and that's some more modern stuff there that's a replacement for the durethane I guess that's what I'm going to use for the color on the uh, the yellow color on the airplane on the metal panels and that mixes this is the hardener for that and then it has uh, an accelerator here that you can use with it too there's no reducer for that. It must be pretty thin on its own. I'll have to see if I can find the instructions for that. But I just dug it out, put it on the paint shaker, and uh, make sure it's all shook up. Uh, it'll be a day or two before I'm ready to use it. 
Okay, and here's my paint booth. That's the upper boot cowl there hanging up. I tried to get a picture of it from the other side, but looking out into the daylight, the camera just black out. It's a terrible paint booth. There's uh, no way to keep crap from floating around and getting on stuff when it's uh, being painted. Bugs get in on it and everything else. I got another little shed that I built for a paint booth and it, I used it a few years ago. It worked okay, but I tried to use it uh, this spring to paint some stuff and it just wasn't working out. I parked uh, some vehicles in front of it and, and the light in there is terrible and it just doesn't work for painting and you just can't see anything. Especially for, well I was painting yellow there on the baggage compartment components on that and it's really hard to see the yellow. The white is even worse, especially when you're painting white over white. Anyway, this, this works. Um, I come out and, and wash the parts all down with preps all once I get them hung up, let it dry, and then tack them with a tack cloth, come in and spray them, and then wait till it dries and knock off all the crap that falls on them, but uh, it's got enough light where I can see anyway. Anyway, this is how a high production shop operates.